connection. Welcome. <laughs> I know I said that I was going to use my green notebook for this, but my green notebook only has about 100 pages left. And the way that I was starting to set this up, I need a lot more than what it had. So <laughs> I'm using, I'm back to using this blue one. This is my favorite color of notebook that Leuchtturm has to offer. And I got everything set up already because I did not feel like doing voiceovers right now, <laughs> which is what I would have to do because I don't like watching videos where somebody is doing something in their notebook and it's just music. So I wanted to take you through a quick flip through of what I have, and I have my little sticky notes here with my notes on it, um, of what I've done, and then we are going to fill out the two, uh, 2023 budget together. So uh, going to the first page, I did have to obviously redraw the year at a glance here. It's got the week numbers labeled, which is really important because I budget on a bi-weekly basis uh, based on my paychecks. And I have my budget and I, I decided to use a simple all caps for my uh, page headers, but a nice um, thick calligraphy cursive for my subheaders within my pages. So I have my budget, and then the my 2023 bill spread that's split into frequency, uh, and then my sinking funds. And these are what we're gonna go over today. And then beyond that, I have all of my accounts. I have something like 20 accounts. And so I wanted to have this page to kind of go over what they are, my paycheck breakdown, and how I use that, uh, some low buy stuff, that is another video that's going to come up and then trackers for all my sinking funds there's many many of those um a both i are i have a page to track my 2023 move but i also wanted to kind of write down what kind of things i was expecting to have to pay for uh like i just booked a flight to get my dog to Rhode Island. And then this page is my January budget and calendar, and I will also be doing a video with that. And on top of that, uh, there'll be some other pages, but I haven't gotten to them. So flipping back to the front, I kind of wanted to explain also what this bullet journal is, um, because it's actually not something that I am going to be using to keep track of finances. It's more going to be something where I record finances. And the reason for that is because I found that using a spreadsheet works really well for me. So like when I, this is an example of a spreadsheet that I have. So this is my account overview. So kind of to kind of give you an idea of like this is what it's going to what's going to happen. I did a paycheck breakdown here. I have my bill dates here along with the 2023 overview. This is where I estimated how much stuff would cost. I have a budget template that looks a lot like my um, budget in here, but it's a little bit different. And that's going to be something that I utilize on a regular basis. And then I also have a spending log that's formatted so that I can select a category from a drop down and then the uh, the money will automatically be added to this section over here and that'll be really useful for weekly check-ins and stuff. So I'm not going to be like keeping track of everything in here because it just didn't work for me. Having my phone on me all the time means that I can keep track of things like the gas that I put in my car. I've been uh, like very consistently, I've been keeping track of how much I spend on gas and how much gas I use since March of this year. And I enjoy doing that, <laughs> frankly. 
but yes, and I won't be I won't be carrying this around, but I will be using it on this channel to illustrate what I have going on because honestly, I love making these spreads very much. And what I would love to have at the end of the year is I'd love to have this book be just full of information that I can kind of flip through and see how I was doing throughout the year. And that was kind of the goal uh, before as well. But I think I was trying to track some stuff on here that is better off being tracked in a spreadsheet. So I'm going to be using this book like I would if I will. That's not even true. I was going to say I would be, I'm using this book like I would if I was keeping track of an a bullet journal, but there's just so much fiddly stuff that I don't want to put in here. <laughs> like for example, a, a, a very explicit spending log. I'd rather just put it on a spreadsheet and then tally everything up. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, another, but what I'm saying is this isn't exactly what what I would do if I was actually using a bullet journal to keep track of my money. And so take it with a grain of salt. Although if you enjoy bullet journaling and this is something that you could do, um, feel free to draw inspiration from what I've done. I, it is really, uh, useful, I think. It's still useful to me, but spreadsheets are just a little more efficient at it and I'm more consistent with tracking my money when I use a spreadsheet. That's where I was going with that. The second thing I wanted to say is, once again, just a huge shout out to Amelia Budgets, who is not only a very supportive YouTube friend, but uh, is someone who I have drawn a lot of inspiration from, from her spreads in her YouTube bullet journal. And so like, for example, um, let's go back to the budget page. Uh, I got the idea to put a calendar in my bullet journal from her. And then this is, I think, very similar to what she does. And I actually copied this layout into my spreadsheet to use. Okay, all of the disclaimers out of the way. Let's go into what I'm spending my money on in 2023. Let's let's do it. So uh, in 2023, I have uh, one source of income. In the past, I have had more. Uh, last year, I was doing Rover. I've uh, done some traveling and uh, working at conventions. And I don't have any plans to do any of that in 2023. I just want to kind of enjoy my time and if I decide to do it great but if I don't I'm not gonna get down on myself so for 2023 I expect my base salary to be about forty six thousand two hundred dollars so let's see here forty six thousand two hundred and two dollars and then um another so this is this is just what i make every two weeks it, times 26. the other thing that i'm including in here because it was messing up my <laughs> it was messing up my calculations is the money that i am using to pay for my rent year of renter's insurance and my first six months of car insurance in 2023. And the reason that I'm including this is because I had money set aside as part of my moving fund to pay for those things because they're huge, like chunks of money. <laughs> and I wanted to use some of my savings to just get those out of the way. So that I rounded up, I, I round up everything. Um, for, I'm, I'm planning on rounding up everything just so that it makes it a little bit easier. But this one is going to be uh, $46,000, uh, 46912 total for my income, even though this is technically savings, I'm just counting it as income. Next, bills. My rent is, um, including the fee to pay online, which is $3, it's going to be $1,410. $13 a month and that um oh right ha <laughs> that takes me to my bills which I am actually I have a separate sheet for this so that 
um, I could illustrate where my money is going. So rent is going to be uh, 14 13 per month and then per year it is 16 nine five six so sixteen thousand nine hundred and fifty six dollars and it's not ideal uh but it was the it's kind of the price range of the area that i'm moving to and also it had a lot of the things i was looking for in an apartment utilities and gym are a little bit sketchy because i don't know how much i'm paying for utilities yet and i don't know which gym i'm going to yet so I kind of guessed based on my, my research into the area. So for utilities, uh, $350 a month, and then um, that would be $4,200 a year. And then for the gym, I kind of ballparked about $50 a month, which is unfortunate because my current gym membership is $25 a month and I like it a lot, but there's not much I can do about that because part of the reason that my gym is so nice is uh, because, and so cheap is because my work, it, my, it's my work gym. Uh, Patreon, I kind of resolved in 2021 to start supporting people on Patreon and all year I've been, I've been supporting a lot of different creators and um, this isn't all of the creators I support. I do pay some yearly Patreon memberships as well, but this is, <laughs> something that I've chosen to put my money to. And um, it's, yeah, so it's, it's also 420, oops, $420. And then Twitch, I do support one creator on Twitch. I don't watch Twitch a lot, but I've been supporting this creator for so long that I wanna keep doing it regardless of how often I watch them. So uh, $72 for Twitch. And then MyNet Diary is the app that I use to keep track of my food. And I decided to uh, keep using that membership. I'm not sure if I'll have the membership for the entire year, but I decided to include it anyway because I am going to be using it uh, for at least the beginning of the year. And then my total bills for the month are $1,863. And like, I'm not excited about it. And a lot of this I think is utilities because when I was living in DC, my utilities were much lower. So when I was kind of setting the budget for my apartment, uh, I was estimating using those utilities. And anyway, hopefully that my utility is lower and then it'll all, it'll all solve itself. Um, and then my total for the year is $22,356. Going back to my bills here, uh, my bills, uh, rent is going to be $16,956, uh, and then utilities is going to be $4,200, and then the gym is going to be 600 and then quarterly i have a couple of subscriptions uh i have my toothbrush which is just six dollars a quarter my um shampoo and conditioner which again i'm not sure i'm going to use it every quarter but it is fifty dollars a quarter um, for shampoo that I, I like quite a lot so i might keep doing it billy which is <laughs> razors and um, an exfoliating soap bar that I also enjoy and this is all just stuff that I don't want to have to think about a lot like I tried out other shampoo and I just I can't keep up with it man <laughs> but quarterly it's only four times a year so I'll be paying $24 for my uh, toothbrush stuff $200 for my shampoo and conditioner which might be a, a lot for shampoo and conditioner I'm going to look into using different ones, but right now I have so much shampoo and conditioner that uh, I'm going to just keep that there. And then uh, $44 here. And even though these are charged quarterly, they're not all in the same quarter. I think Function of Beauty and Quip Our March and Billy is February right now, but 
I just count them all at the same time and you'll see how I kind of deal with that. And then the total is $268. And then car insurance is biannual. Um, that's what gives me the best discount. And then there, that one is $530. And that one is $1,060 per year. And I've shopped around for car insurance. I get mine through Progressive. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's consistently been the lowest price uh, for me. And I think part of that is just my loyalty discount at this point. Um, and then renter's insurance, I'm also getting it through Progressive. Uh, that one is $180. Um, if and these are and then these uh, next three, if books could kill you, wrong about in maintenance phase, are all yearly memberships. Um, Forty-four dollars, thirty-one dollars. Uh, you get a discount if you pay for the full year. And also, I just like all of these podcasts a lot, and you get their bonus episodes, so I use them. Delta card. Uh, I don't use this credit card a lot anymore. In fact, I just booked a flight on Delta and I used a different credit card. And um, I also don't use credit cards for like everyday expenses. I just use it for things like flights and paying my therapist that I know I'm gonna pay off using my sinking funds. But I keep it because the free check bag is super worth it. This might not be permanent though. Uh, depending on, you know, my circumstances this year, how much traveling I do. Because <laughs> now that I'm not traveling to hang out with my boyfriend like every other month, it might not be as worth it. Um, PlayStation Plus, again, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to renew it because I was using it primarily to um, play video games with my boyfriend. And now that we live in the same area, I, I just might not use it. Um, so I might get rid of it. In fact, I'm that's that's probably something I should be doing, but it renews in April, so I've got plenty of time. Uh, and that one is 435 per year. I'm, I'm not even gonna refill, I'm not even gonna fill that out um, because it's all the same. But the grand total is twenty four thousand one one hundred and nineteen dollars per year, just on bills. We love to see it. But anyway, having gone through that. We can now kind of go back to this overview and you can see my car insurance is going to be $1,060. Um, assuming that it stays the same uh, in when I renew it in July. And then my renter's insurance is 180, which I'll pay for up front. Total for all of these bills is going to be 22, nine, nine, six, $22,996. My subscriptions, my monthly subscriptions uh, total is going to be $600. My quarterly subscriptions are going to be $268. And then my annual subscriptions are $255 with the large caveat that about $150 of that might be going away. Um, and the total for that is $1,123, which could be under $1,000 if I cancel the two things that I'm thinking about canceling, which I strongly, strongly am. Next is my regular expenses, groceries, gas, dining out, entertainment, miscellaneous. The way that I'm budgeting for this is I get paid every two weeks on Tuesday, but I also have um, kind of a rollover so that um, I can put money in my account Monday, regardless of when I got paid. So for groceries, I'm gonna give myself $55 a month, or $55 a week. Um, I found that like the way that I do groceries, if you haven't seen my last video, I do talk about my grocery bullet journal, or my grocery, not grocery bullet journal, my meal planning journal is really helpful and I don't have it with me, but I did, I did get it and, oh, it's in my room. I put nail polish on the ribbons to keep them from fraying, but uh, yeah, so it's really helpful. So $55 isn't even like necessarily how much I need, but at the same time, I am going to be living near someone who I like cooking with. So it'll be nice to be able to contribute to groceries that way too. 
Um, so $2,860 is $55 a week times 55, 52 weeks. Gas. I don't anticipate needing a lot of gas. I used quite a lot this year, but part of that was because when I was dog sitting, I was driving around everywhere. So I put it at $25 a week and hopefully it doesn't go more than that. Um, especially since like the spending on gas that I do now is mostly driving to the cities, which is about $35 per trip. Um, and I won't be doing that either. So $1,300 total with the asterisk that I might not need that much. Dining out is also getting $25 a week. Uh, again, with the asterisk that this might be getting the, the rollover from groceries and gas, honestly, um, because I haven't lived near the person that I'm dating in so long. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, I'm unclear on that, how that's going to affect my overall budget, but I think that between these three things, they can kind of compensate for each other. Entertainment, I give myself $10 a week for entertainment, and that's stuff like new video games, uh, movies, oh, don't need that, uh, movies, stuff like that. I want to play more Magic the Gathering uh, when I move. So like entries to tournaments, that sort of thing. And then miscellaneous is another $10. And that's supposed to be for like household items, but could, you know, fill in the gaps for any of this other stuff. And this is, this expenses section is primary, going to be primarily where my weekly, uh, weekly spending is going to come from, or my weekly check-ins are going to come from. But the total here is actually just an even $6,500. And I'm interested to see what the actual is going to be at the end of the year. Um, so for balance, we have, we have four, six, two, zero, two. Um, this is also an estimate based on my calculations. I do get a raise that goes into effect uh, my second paycheck in January, and this is what I think I'm going to get from that, um, which just reminds me that I need to adjust what income I get for my January budget because my first paycheck is going to be from December, so it's not going to have them raise apply to it anyway. So this is actually probably going to be, it's going to be a, a little wonky, but I'll figure that out. Bills is 22, 9, Nine, six. Um, subscriptions is $1,123. Expenses is $6,500. And then sinking in and sinking out takes us to my sinking accounts page. Uh, I have several sinking funds, as you can see, and I've separated in, in, uh, them into spend and save. So these ones I anticipate things coming out of. So annual bills, for example, is where money is going to go for my car insurance and uh, renter's insurance for uh, the second half of 2023 and the first half of 2024. Uh, my birthday, I saved money like consistently for my birthday this year and it was so satisfying. So I'm going to include that in my car savings. Uh, which is just car maintenance events, so entries for things like races, uh, when I do more of that. Gemma is my dog. Uh, gifts for um, getting things for my parents and my brother for their birthdays and anniversaries, but also Christmas. Medical, which is my medical stuff, which is probably just going to be therapy, God willing, you know. Uh, month ahead, which is just where I am going to keep my rent for the next month uh, while it's accumulating interest. Because right now my bank is giving like 3.5% interest. So I'd like to put my rent for the month in a place where it can just accumulate. Um, eventually I'd like this to be more of like a um, closer to like a, a, a sub-emergency fund where I can use it to pay for my all of my bills from it. But right now it's just rent. Services include things like massages, uh, nail, getting my nails done, stuff like that. If I decide to do it, that'll be why. Spending is anything that falls into my low buy. Um, and I'll go over that again in another video. Traveling is going to be mostly uh, coming back 
into town to see my parents, but also um, my boyfriend and I are planning on going to Dallas in October, which I'm very excited about. And then um, I want to take a trip for myself. So there's that. Um, HCFSA, which is my healthcare flexible spending account from my work. And that one, I set the balance at the beginning when I, when I make my benefits elections. And that will just get uh, the money in at the beginning of the year. And then it'll be coming out of my paycheck for the entire year. And I just have that going on. And MRA is my reimbursement account for dental and vision expenses. And I have those included because I'm not contributing to them anymore uh, once the year has started because my income is... Um, oh, my income, by the way, is this is not including my retirement. It is not including uh, my benefits like health care. It is not including the uh, withholding because of my election to my health care flexible spending account. It's not including taxes. It's not including any of this. This is, this is how much goes into my bank account. And then, but I have them included just to see. Um, because I will be keeping track of how much I goes in and how much comes out throughout the year. And then the save is I want to have money for my uh, car, my dog, and my medical sinking funds because these are going to be fully stocked at the beginning of the year. Hopefully, hopefully I won't need more than that. And so this, this 2024 is where the money for those would be going, but I'm putting them in next year because the thing is I noticed that I was taking, it, it was hard for me to kind of keep track of whether the savings account had enough money. So by having it set at the beginning of the year and then um, using uh, a separate savings account to save for next year, I'm hoping that I can kind of see how much money do I actually need? How much money should I put in there? Barcelona is, uh, I want to save for a trip to Barcelona in 2024. Bonus savings is just where money that I don't need for like bills goes or money above and beyond what I estimated for my uh, salary goes. Like I, I hopefully, hopefully I undershot it, but I don't know. Is that, no, that's not anything. Um, emergency fund is just my emergency fund. I already have this. Uh, pretty well st stacked up, but it's also kind of my if my student loans don't get reimbursed or re like forgiven, then that's going to also be helping to pay for my student loans. Uh, once that, once I once I have to start paying for my student loans again, and then my twenty twenty four move, which well I I just need money for it. So, and then my, this is weird. It doesn't, it, it's not counted towards my total because it's already money that I already have, but I wanted to keep track of it because I wanted to see how much I spent versus my budget and then the total. So let's fill this baby in. Um, so my annual bills, my goal, uh, because I want to be able to cover my bills for the year is, so for my birthday, I want to save $500. My car, zero, because I already have all the money in there. Events, $650. And it, it, it might seem kind of high, but like the things that I like to do, um, my boyfriend and I will do obstacle course races and the entry for those is ridiculously high. So just have it all covered. And if I don't use it, it'll roll over to next year. Gemma, I already have stocked. Gifts, um, $500. I don't give a lot of like gift gifts, but I want to be able to like give my parents uh, and my brother like actual and my boyfriend actually a big part of this is uh, my boyfriend's gifts and I want to be able to give them actual gifts. My month ahead. So this is this is a little wild. My month ahead is uh, this is why it gets a start. It's uh, I, I want eight, $18,382 to have gone through the month ahead fund by the end of the year because that'll be uh, $707 a paycheck. And 
I'm going to be filming a video talking about um, all of my accounts and then my uh, paycheck me budgeting method uh, after Tuesday, after I get paid. But yeah, so this is this is going to be all plus but all minus, so it's going to break even. So, but I wanted to represent that I want it to have had eighteen thousand dollars in it at one point. Uh, services. Oh, services also includes the tattoos that I'm going to be getting, and I have money in there for the tattoos that I have booked already for next year, but I also wanted to include um, some more in case I want to get a different one. Uh, spending is $650, um, and that one's kind of flexible too because I already have some money in there and I want to spend maximum of $1,000. Again, I'll be talking about that in a different video. Uh, travel, $2,000. I have money in my travel fund already, but again, this is, it's, it's more, it's more of a sinking fund in that I add money to it and take money out of it all the time. <laughs> and then neither of these are getting anything because they've already been contributed to. And the total for that is $7,186. So this one, I expect both the plus and the minus columns to have things in them. This one, I expect only pluses, no minuses, unless something goes dramatically wrong. Uh, but anyway, so uh, tw uh, 2024, I want $2,500 in there to cover um, $750 into my car, uh, $750, no, $1,000 into Gemma, and $750 into my medical. And that's, you know, um, especially because I have a healthcare flexible spending account, savings account, Fle flexible spending account, and my reimbursement account, I don't anticipate needing that much medical, but you know, better safe than sorry. I did hit my deductible this year. I don't anticipate doing it next year. Uh, $3,250 um, for Barcelona, bonus savings. I'm not anticipating anything, but I do want to keep track of how much goes in and out. Emergency, um, this one is kind of low. It's just $1,300. And the reason is because I already have an, uh, enough in there for me for like three months of expenses. So I want to kind of look at all this rest of this stuff. And then um, my 2024 move is $2,000. And that'll cover like a deposit for my next apartment and stuff like that. Um, $9,050 for my save savings. My 20, uh, 23 move, the budget for that one is um, $4,500. And that includes um, any fees that I have to pay for starting my utilities. It includes, um, I'm leaving my dog when I drive to Rhode Island and then flying back to pick up my dog and bring her back to Rhode Island on a plane. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think it'll be a lot, lot less stressful for her to not be there while I'm getting everything set up because I don't have any furniture that I'm going to be getting and I we're going to be moving stuff in and out. So I just don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, the totals here, and, but it's, it's, like I said, it's not included in anything, um, in the addition of anything because it's money that I already have. I just wanted to include it because it is a savings account. My spend save is nine zero five zero, and the total for that is sixteen thousand two hundred and thirty six dollars. And then um, going back to my overview, um, the amount going into my sinking is. Um, so I, this one is, this is also weird. I am uh, including, I'm assuming that I'll spend about $5,000 of my sinking funds next year. Um, this is very arbitrarily selected, but we'll see. Um, and then that will leave me with $11,236 in things that went into my sinking fund versus things that came out. It'll... It, It'll make sense at the end of the year, I promise. 
but the total is uh, $57 is how much I'll be up after the bills, the subscriptions, the expenses, and the savings. And this money, like I said, is just like free floating money because I have accounts that I specifically put money into for all of my savings holes. And that is what I found works the best for me. And like this will probably end up getting thrown into bonus savings, for example. Anyway, I've been recording for far too long. Um, but if you are interested in seeing, for example, what I'm doing with my sinking funds, uh, how I'm budgeting for January of 2023, um, what I'm doing for a low buy, and how I am budgeting for a, another cross-country move. This is going to be my third in three years. And <laughs> um, if you're interested in any of that, please subscribe. I plan on making a lot more of this content and I, because I've really been enjoying it. So um, if you want to see how I budgeted before, go ahead and I have a, a video up for budgeting for June, I believe, where I set up the whole spread so you can kind of see that. But um, that being said, thank you. Uh, <laughs>